I would not make an event for day one dailies. No, I would exactly what, what you suggested. I would make events, essentially an event in my mind equates to a project in the old world. You know, all of my media for one client slash project slash job would be one event. And I would want, you know, I would put that on a, maybe on a drive for that client or maybe on a, on a media drive that I'm already working with. And then I would import into that. Mostly, I would probably create smart a new keyword collection and import each dailies into that and name it after what, whatever it is that you're importing. Uh, and that way you get a bin automatically with it. Uh, just by nature of the fact that you have that starting keyword collection and then import to it. As you saw when I, opened, when I created a new keyword collection. Um, just a note, uh, let's try to hold the questions as much as we yeah. can for the second half of the show so we can allow our presenters to get through as much as they possibly can. So if I, if I create a new keyword collection, I'm going to leave it untitled so I'll delete it in a moment. My choices there are to import files or import from a camera. If I go to camera, um, there is very, it is designed for tapeless cameras, for non-tape cameras. Um, it also will jump to, a, I'm sorry, yeah, it also jump to any connected camera that's a live camera, such as, uh, as this, which is not very exciting. <laughs> and I wish it wouldn't. Uh, that's, uh, if you have a camera connected, it won't do that to you. Uh, but it, it, it will do some very limited ingest from uh, file-based, from firewire cameras. So you'll import DV, DV Cam, DVC Pro, DVC Pro HD, or HDV. But it has no batch capture mode. It is essentially queued up to where you want to start, hit start capture, hit import, then when you're ready to stop, hit, hit escape or it'll reach the end of the tape. So it's really a capture now alternative, or it behaves like capture now. But it's cool in that you can ingest and you can create an archive. And I got reminded this morning by Steve Bass that an archive uh, which we can create, can also be a whole bunch of non-related media. So if you want to put all of your graphics for a particular project into an archive that's going to be kept and maintained and accessible to you outside of a project, then you can create that as an archive as well. What the cool thing is that you can start ingesting from the camera. I'm going to turn this off because I don't know how inter irritating that is for you, but it's really irritating for me. Um, you can start ingesting or start working, you say bring in from a camera, start from the camera, say it's going to go to this event on this drive and you add the media to the, to the event, then it's going to, going to allow you to start editing straight away within just a few seconds while it processes the metadata out of it. You're going to get a keyword collection for it. You, are, you can then start to edit, start to build a project. In the background, it is copying the media to your event and when it is finished doing that, it will transparently, unbeknownst to you, start, stop using the media on the card and start using the media on your hard drive transparently. So there's no wait while it transcodes. If you choose to transcode either to optimised media or to ProRes proxy, it will uh, do that in the background. You can, continue, you continue to work first off the card, then off the hard drive, and then once the transcoded optimised media is cre created in the background, it will then swap you over and start using the... Uh, the optimised media, all without any further work from you. And I know there are those people who prefer not to have things done automatically for, for you, but uh, there are also people who shouldn't be trusted to do that. And I've met far more of the shouldn't be trusted than I have met of people who know what they're doing, sadly. You've got a four minute warning. Yeah, okay. In that case, I will move on to the other type. Oh, one more thing we've got to put in there is notes, because this is a good free form. I'm going to go back to my favourite view, which is here. Scrub across to here. Notes is a field that you can type anything up to 128 characters in. This is fully searchable, so if you start to write uh, scene, detect scene information or you write, start to write information in there, this, this is a note. Notes are independent, so they're independent between any project and the event. So a note that you put into an event before you move, uh, a clip before you move it to a project and edit will be there in the project but you can change it in the project without affecting the note that is in the same clip in the event. Yeah, clean? Cool. Um, there is one other, couple of other things I want to quickly look at because that's not the only metadata we have access to. You have all of these <coughs> columns that are available to you. This is really all of the information that you can search on and build complex, key, uh, build um, smart collections out of. But we also have over here, if I actually select some media, we have a whole bunch of, of uh, media over here, which information, this is all metadata that came from the camera, that, came, that is about the file. 
Interesting one here is the audio roll. Audio routing doesn't really exist in Final Cut Pro 10 at the moment. When it does, it's all going to be based on this audio roll. What role does the audio have? So when you want to split it out for, for mixing, you'll be able to split out dialogue separate from music, separate from effects automatically, just based on metadata. And if you wanted to uh, find a way here, uh, you're not happy with any of these views, um, you know, you want to look at all of your EXIF metadata, you want to look at all of your ITPC metadata. A lot of cameras put in EXIF metadata, even though they, they might be mostly video. Uh, uh, but you can edit this metadata view, and if you really want to build your own view out of anything, out of any of these metadata fields that can possibly come from a camera, any one of them, just pick your own, choose as you go. Metadata, 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 never metadata I didn't like. Uh, like this one, for example, I was going to, I was going to ask. I, was going to come, I had a conference call with Apple this morning and I had, thought, I need to find some more questions because I apparently don't have enough questions. So well, what about the metadata fields that you don't have support for, like, uh, like the reporter field from AVC Cam? And I thought, I should really check that that don't have that before I ask. Oops. Fortunately, I checked because the rat, that comes from AVC Cam. It's a field that Panasonic have never used. They're, none of their cameras have ever put a, um, an entry into it that I can... I can tell, but the, the Final Cut Pro 10 is set up to receive that should ever anyone enter that into the, um, the camera. And one last thing that I want to I uh, look at is, I don't really care about you at the moment, you're not going to let me, okay, um, is this really nice, sweet, um, custom renaming field, and I'm going to, um, I can rename a clip with a clip name with counter, clip name from, original clip name from camera, which it probably is what it is, yep. So that's not gonna be much help. But if I go clip name and date and time, it's been immediately changed down to the date and time, um, non-destructively. So the original name is still stored. This is the advantage of everything being based on a, on a database. It's, um, it's completely flexible. So if I say, well, I don't really like that one, I want to really change that back to um, uh, the original name from the camera, it didn't do it. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> uh, yeah. Just undo it back to it. It's all non-destructive. It's, it's, and you can undo back to when you last started Final Cut Pro 10. Um, that's a skim over the, over the metadata. I have a far more comprehensive and logical look at it in the con Conquering the Metadata Foundations of Final Cut Pro 10, which is available at philiphodgetts.com as a PDF for $4.95, or you can buy it in the lobby as a, as a fully published printed book from Amazon uh, for, for $10. It's normally $14.95 from Amazon in about a week's time. Uh, thank you. I've got to quit Final Cut Pro and let uh, Larry move in.